In this video, we'll talk about the Cree LOXP system. This is a site-specific recombination-based technology and this is frequently used in molecular biology lab to knock out a gene in vivo. Mostly this system is available in mice. So the biggest application of Cree LOXP system is to create gene knockouts. That means deletion of a portion of the gene. But besides gene knockout, frankly telling, it can be used for gene deletions, inversions, or let's say translocation reactions as well. So Cree LOXP system has diversification of application. So let's see how Cree LOXP system actually works. So Cree LOXP system usage, uses the site specific recombination system and the Cree enzyme is actually a recombinase. It's a tyrosine based recombinase. So in this particular Cree LOXP system, you have a so-called Cree mice, which, which is crossed with a LOXP mice. And bam, in F1 generation, you have the knockout. How it is the happening? So in the Cree mouse, you have the Cree recombinase coding sequence underneath a tissue specific promoter. For example, if the tissue specific promoter is expressed in brain, the Cree would be expressed only in the brain. Now, the LOXP mouse is generated in such a way that it has specific sequences which is flanked by LOXP sites. LOXP sites are necessary for this site directed uh, recombination reaction. So LOXP site in this example is flanked by two exons of a particular gene that we want to knock out. So Cre upon crossing these two things in the F1 generation the mouse would have the Cre recombinase produced and that is only produced in the brain in this case because the promoter is active in the brain. Cre recombinase is getting uh, produced and binding to specific LOXP site on the particular gene of interest. And as a result, it is floxing out a portion of these gene. So in this case, three exons are now deleted, floxed out and the result is basically a knockout. Three exon is deleted in this case, a deletion mutant is created. Now, whether it is deletion or inversion, all these things matters on the orientation of the LOXP site. If the LOXP site is oriented like this, it would result in floxing out or deletion of a portion of the construct. So what is site specific recombination actually? Site specific recombination, as the name suggests, this is a recombination reaction which is directed by specific sequences, which is known as recombination recognition sequence, let's say. So how this recombination reaction works, obviously it is enzyme based. So Cre enzyme is basically a tyrosine based recombinase. So be it tyrosine based recombinase or serine based recombinase, it would have a hydroxyl group, which is a source of nucleophil. It would attack the phosphate backbone and create a enzyme DNA hybrid. Eventually, it would uh, create the strand passage and the reaction by this. If you want to learn more about site specific recombination and how does it work, you can click on the video in the I button or in the description. But anyway, let's see how this Cree mouse are generated or the LOXP mouse are generated. So the Cree construct is actually injected into the fertilized egg. So in the, in the pronucleus of the fertilized egg. So the Cree construct has Cree recombination, Cree recombinase sequence underneath the tissue specific promoter and this is loaded onto a transposon based vector such that it can stably integrate into the genome at very early stages. Now the zygote is injected in the mouse. The zygote would eventually form the embryo. It would uh, develop like a normal embryo. And ultimately this mouse would give rise to the transgenic Cree mouse and the, the transgenic line is born. It would be now crossed and maintained as a Cree stock. Similarly, using a similar transgenic approach, one can generate the LOXP mouse as well. Okay, now let's talk about the applications of Cree LOXP system. This has a widespread active uh, applications. One of the first application is creating gene knockouts. So people call it conditional knockouts. Let's say you want to understand how a gene X regulates brain development. So obviously you, you should make a mutant from a classical point of view. But what happened is due to the mutation of gene X, the animals die. They didn't even survive to the mature state. 
Why is that? Maybe gene X is required for some important function in the liver. So that is why it is lethal. So, but your question is dedicated to the brain. You want to understand that what really happens when gene X is selectively gone in the brain, not in other portion of the body. That is why Cree-Loxby system is really useful. Because Cree-Loxby system gives you a spatio-temporal control by using the tissue specific promoter. And that is how the conditional knockout concept is coming into the picture. So the Cree has the promoter which is tissue specific and the Loxby site flanking the gene is present in all the portions. But the recombination reaction is happening specially in those tissue where Cree is active. Now this is a spatial control but what happens to the temporal control? In order to have a temporal control the Cree ERT2 system is used. In the Cree ERT2 system we have uh, a Cree ER mouse. In this Cree ER mouse along with the Cree uh, sequence the ligand binding domain of estrogen receptor is also cloned. So in the protein state you have a Cree and estrogen receptor ligand binding domain fusion protein. Normally without the presence of estrogen or tamoxifen so what happens is the uh, entire receptor complex is inhibited by, HF, the, by uh, HSP90. So in this case you can see it in the blue. So even if Cree is present in this case Cree cannot act because it is inhibited by a heat shock protein. But when we inject this same mouse with tamoxifen which acts like a ligand for these uh, estrogen receptor it leads to the dissociation of the HS, uh, uh, heat shock protein 90 that leads to the Cree activity. That means whenever we inject TAM, we can start the Cree activity. It gives us a nice temporal control when the, rea when the recombination reaction is happening. So the tissue specific promoter here is giving us the uh, spatial control and tamoxifen injection is giving a temporal control. Thereby using Cree Loxby system, one can achieve a spatio temporal control of gene expression or let's say gene knockout. Second, this Cree Loxby system can be used to uh, do lineage tracing experiments or simply put, label some particular cell types or category of cells. Let's say you have a particular reporter gene, in this case TD tomato, it can be GFP as well. Anyway, the reporter gene has a stop cassette marked here in green and it, it is flanked by the Loxby sites. So normally in this particular mouse, there would be no reporter expression because there is a stop cassette, right? But when it is crossed with a tissue specific uh, uh, promoter containing Cree, it would be activated upon Cree mediated recombination. So Cree mediated recombination would flux out the stop cassette. And now the entire coding sequence would be transcribed and translated. Production of re reporter gene is happening. That would label specific cells in red. And this is how we can really label a specific subtype of neuron or let's say a class of neuron in a mouse brain or any other organ. It only requires a organ specific or tissue specific Cree. Now um, using this sequence you can label subpopulation of neurons. For example, let's say you want to understand what happens in what happens into the dopaminergic neuron when you treat it with a drug or some kind of mutation happened what happens to selectively the dopaminergic neuron population not other neurons. So in this case you have a tyroxine hydroxylase promoter which is very selective to dopaminergic neuron which produces dopamine. Anyway underneath that you have a uh, membrane bound uh, CD8 GFP reporter and again it's a stop flux reporter that means it has a stop codon in the reporter gene. So Cree mediated recombination would level those cells which are dopaminergic. It won't level any cells which are serotonergic or glutamatergic because this particular promoter is only active in dopaminergic cell. Now obviously this particular uh, reporter line is marking all the dopaminergic neurons. So we can quantify the morphology of these neurons. So let's say we have a control set and we have treated it with a drug XYZ let's say. And now we want to understand what happens to the neuronal morphology, what happens to the neuronal properties. All these questions can be answered using the Cree-Loxby system. These are only few applications that I have elaborated in. 
but there are many other applications which can be used for example neurobiologists frequently want to understand what is the neuronal activity status and that's why they use a calcium reporter in vivo and this is known as a gcam6 reporter if you want to learn more about calcium uh, imaging or gcam you can get it in my i button or the description box anyway in the gcam mouse what happens there is a stop cassette at the end terminus of the GCAMP sequence, GCAMP is a genetically encoded calcium sensor. So when there is a cremediated uh, recombination, it leads to the transcription and translation of GCAMP. So GCAMP fluoresces when there is calcium present in the neuron and it indirectly reports the neuronal activity. So when the neuron is firing, GCAMP would also show enhanced fluorescence. Using this approach and combining it with two photon microscopy, um, a scientist can actually look at the specific layers of neuron in the mouse brain while they are behaving or undergoing some kind of drug treatment. So this is how Creloxpy system is very useful for multitude of application. So I hope this was useful. So in summary, I'll say what is Creloxpy system? We learned it's a site specific recombinase based technology. What is the use of Creloxpy system? It can be used in many ways. But one of the most popular um, application is creating deletion, insert insertions or translocations in a particular gene of interest. And what is the advantage of Creloxpy system? Yes, we can control the Creloxpy system in spatiotemporal manner. That means we can control gene deletion spatially as well as temporally. But what is the disadvantage of this Creloxpy system? Sometimes what happens is the Creloxpy system is leaky. That means even if a particular promoter is not expressed in a particular tissue, Cre is active in that tissue. So that is a often problem using Creloxpy system. So I hope this was useful. You can get more notes and flashcard in my Facebook page or in my Instagram page. Links are provided in the description. You can support my channel using super thanks option. Your small contribution as small as let's say 50 rupees would be really useful for us. You can pay via PayPal, Paytm or UPI. See you in the next video.